Is compounding pharmacist a good career? Is it worth it? In this video, we'll be talking about what's the pay like? What do they do? Is it better than other careers? What's the satisfaction like? Are they flexible careers? And a whole lot more. I'm Alex, your Happy PharmD coach and founder of the company, and I'm excited to dive into this subject, something that I really enjoy because I was oh so good at making chapstick back in pharmacy school. <laughs> Why am I not in there? Just kidding. I'm not good at that stuff. On this channel, we talk about all things pharmacy careers, the job market, trends, industry knowledge, and helping you discover what you would love to do in the world of pharmacy. So if you like that kind of information, subscribe and you never have to miss another video. I mean, don't you hate missing out on like cool stuff in pharmacy? Who's making cool stuff in pharmacy? Compounding pharmacists are. So with that, <laughs> let's jump into the video. So what do compounding pharmacists do? Well, simply put, they help create medicines that aren't readily available and made by manufacturers. They take raw materials and put it together and give it to a patient in either a tablet, a pill, could be in an IV bag, and they make the medicine directly for a patient's needs. Sometimes the patient isn't a human. When I think about compounding, I think of Frankenstein. I think of the alchemist. I think of the mad scientist concocting the perfect potion to cure a patient. Oh. Compounding is actually very deeply rooted in our profession. In fact, the first pharmacy drugstore to ever open was in the 8th century in Baghdad. In their pharmacy, they were making things like medicines, compounds, dyes, perfumes, and frankly, I think we're still doing that today. According to IBIS World, which does reports on different industries, they found that there are just under 3,000 businesses operating in the world of compound pharmacy, and they employ just over 32,000 people. Now, they don't break it down by pharmacists, but I would venture to guess that there's somewhere in the vicinity of 10 to 15,000 pharmacists that just strictly do compounding pharmacy in these settings. In the bigger context, we know that there's around 20,000 independent pharmacies and many, if not most of them, do some sort of form of compounding. Now, just because something is independent doesn't mean that they're a compounding pharmacy and just because they're a compounding pharmacy doesn't mean that they're independent. So again, pharmacy, we just stink at like clarifying what is what in our profession. Some normal job titles that you could find this under would be compounding pharmacist, sterile compounding pharmacist, or clinical compounding pharmacist. All right, let's talk about the money. I want to see the money. M -m -m money. M -m -m money. So just how much can you make in this field? Well, it's pretty comparable to other community pharmacy settings, if not a little bit lower. The range is anywhere from 90 to $140,000 a year. ZipRecruiter reported around 126 a year, while salary.com rates it a little bit higher at 138. There aren't too many different fields that you could transition to using these skills. Compounding pharmacists are known for their hard skills, right? You're physically making some compounds, which means you typically want to use those skills in other settings. Sometimes compounding pharmacists get into nuclear. Sometimes they get into USB 797 stuff. They get into the legal side of things. But in general, they typically stay within that field. But there's lots of niches within compounding pharmacy. There's sterile, there's veterinarian, pediatric, dermatology, hormone replacement therapy, pain management, dental, ophthalmic, nutraceuticals. But often these things kind of all blur together. Many compounding pharmacies offer all of these things. One pharmacist I helped a long time ago, like even before I had the Happy PharmD and I was just coaching on the side while working as a pharmacist, he worked in a veterinary and compounding pharmacy that specifically made Kentucky Derby horse medicine. That's all they did. They just serviced these high-end class racing horses, you know? You know, it's super niche to go in any of these fields and, and thus it's very rare uh, to find a job like this. But once you do, these, these people typically hold on to these kinds of jobs because it's very interesting, niche, can be highly secure. 
We didn't highlight compounding pharmacy in our happy pharmacy salary guide, but if you'd like to download it and compare it to other industries, you can do so with the link that's in the comments. Check it out. Now, because compounding is a little bit different and because it's not retail pharmacy, the pay is lower than the typical retail chain pharmacist. So given these factors and these things, I would give the salary score a six out of 10. All right, let's talk about job satisfaction. For this section, I wanna start off with Reddit because I think some people reveal some interesting things about compounding in comparison to its community brethren. One Redditor shared that the stress doesn't even compare to retail chain pharmacy. One Redditor shared how much she wanted to be a compounding pharmacist because of the work and life balance and the fun and fulfilling moment in solving problems for patients. It's really a different role for pharmacists to be able to actually physically create the medicine that heals someone. Where in a lot of retail settings, community, or even hospital, am care, clinical, you're not actually like creating something. You're deciding things, you dispense things that have already been made. But in this setting, understanding their problems and formulating a really specific solution for them can be really gratifying for the right person. Heck, it's even satisfying to like actually make the medicine. I don't know if you're into ASMR at all, but you know, there's there's whole channels dedicated to this sort of thing. And one Redditor shared in oddly satisfying someone compounding pharmacy, just simple medicines. And it uh, kind of went a little viral in the channel. You know, these sort of things can be calming and it's nice to kind of step away from things to be able to actually just work on something. All right, we looked at what unregistered, unverified Redditors said about community pharmacy, but what about some potentially registered people from smaller community chains on Glassdoor? Well, overall, the ratings are higher than I would say retail chains or even some smaller chains and supermarkets. Wedgwood got a 2.7, which is a little bit low, and they mainly talked about the low uh, ratings for senior management and work-life balance. But meanwhile, Martin's Pharmacy and All Care Pharmacy got great scores by comparison. Martin's being the best, getting great scores for even management and work-life balance. And we even have helped a few pharmacists on their journey into compounding. We actually have helped a few pharmacists as well on their journeys for their career. Check out this pharmacist who is creating CBD products and launching her business and what cool things she's done because of it. Or check out this student who shared his story on how he was able to create a compounding solution for a hospital and generate not just a lot of money and save some money, but also created some awesome next steps for his career. The literature also says that compounding pharmacists are more satisfied, as one study found that they enjoyed their work more than dispensing drugs like in a retail chain and felt empowered to do the role of a pharmacist. Given all of these factors and the high reports of satisfaction from multiple sources, I'm going to give compounding pharmacy a satisfaction of eight out of 10. Now let's talk about demand. Given the specialized nature of compounding pharmacy and how pharmacy in general is getting more and more specialized for the future and for the future needs of patients with very complicated and specialized disease states, I believe we're going to see an expansion in the compounding space for the future. Let's look at the number of available jobs. When we made this video in preparation for research, we found that ZipRecruiter had just over 500 jobs in compounding pharmacy, making over $120,000 a year. Meanwhile, Indeed.com found over 2,000 jobs in the field. And luckily on Indeed, we also found that 88% of these jobs are entry level positions meaning the vast majority, they don't care. They, <laughs> you don't have to have a ton of experience to do this. Come on in, we'd love to have you. Now, obviously compounding pharmacy is a much, much smaller field than independent pharmacy, retails obviously. So the opportunities here aren't as high. What I've actually observed is that pharmacists will come to us when working in compounding pharmacy and they'll find out that their store is either closing or getting bought out and they can't find another compounding pharmacy job in the area and they don't want to move. 
Usually in these conditions, they find something else to transition into outside of compounding pharmacy. But I think it needs to be said because if you're not willing to move and your store closes, which there's always a risk of, um, it is hard to find another compounding pharmacy job without moving to an entirely new area. Albeit that it's not impossible. I mean, if you live near a, a large metro area, there's gonna be multiple compounding pharmacies in that area. So considering these things, I'm gonna give compounding pharmacy a demand score of eight out of 10. So now it's time for the final factor, flexibility. It's the magic factor. What's the work-life balance like? How stable are things? Are, do people feel like they can get in and out of the profession? On average, we found many examples of pharmacists working very normal schedules, eight to nine hour shifts, Monday through Friday. Weekends are very rare, but somewhat common, especially on Saturdays. But a lot of these compounding pharmacies act and operate like independents and they keep somewhat normal business hours. So you're not gonna be working second, third shift typically. You're not gonna be working on weekends and usually off on holidays. Obviously, you're probably not gonna find a remote pharmacist compounding role. It's not impossible, but I mean, until we figure out how to have robots create everything for us, I think there's still gonna be plenty of room and space for a compounding pharmacist. After all, the whole point of compounding is creating things that manufacturers cannot create at large scale. So I don't know when exactly automation would take over this industry, but since it's been around since like the eighth century, I don't see compounding going away anytime soon or being out automated. It is store dependent, but typically there's a lot of perks to the job that are allowing autonomy. You have the ability to run and operate your shift how you see fit. It doesn't mean you're not gonna have a micromanager in a compounding pharmacy, but there's typically rules and guidelines that everyone has to abide by for sterile reasons, and hopefully that means your pharmacy is safe. And because compounding pharmacists typically help patients with very specific needs, there is a lot of space for continuous learning. You'll be constantly trying to figure out how to provide the next thing to the next patient. Whereas in the typical retail chain pharmacy setting, you know the disease states that are coming through your door. It's not specialized. You're not really doing a whole lot of problem solving. And it's usually the same kind of problem. Plus it's been well documented like in this article here about analyzing compounding pharmacy robotics, what to expect. Pharmacists have been wondering when is AI, when are robotics gonna take over? And there's a lot of barriers still holding people back from advancing this profession technologically. So because of all of these factors, I'm going to give flexibility score a six out of 10 for compounding pharmacy. Okay, let's wrap it up. Where are we at for a final score? For salary for compounding pharmacists, we said as a six out of 10, you know, it's somewhat competitive to other retail pharmacy chains, but it's probably gonna be less compared to the major chains. The satisfaction score was its highest score as an eight out of 10 due to lots of patient interactions, great problem solving, continuous learning, being able to create something with your hands and deliver it to a patient. And then the other high score was demand. We're seeing medicine specialize more and more. We're seeing uh, independents doing more and more compounding over the years. And there are quite a bit of jobs available in this space. And so we gave it an eight out of 10. And then finally for flexibility, although it's mostly a physical presence required, no remote, and typically you get quite a bit of autonomy with these roles. So we gave it a score of a seven out of 10. Putting all these scores together, you get an average score of a seven out of 10 rating. Look, compounding pharmacy can be great for the right person. If you're someone who really enjoys the physical manipulation of materials to create a product for someone, if you enjoy solving complex problems to create a complex medication for a complex situation, and you enjoy putting this all together in a pharmacy setting, well, this may be a great career path for you. It's not as large of a market, it's not as great as pay by comparison to retail chain stores, but people are reporting high levels of satisfaction. And so this career path gets definitely our seal of approval as something that many pharmacists can love and enjoy. 
So what did you think? Am I being fair to community pharmacy in the compounding setting? Is this a fair assessment? Did I not clarify enough? Am I talking about independence or community or compounding? Look, at the end of the day, this is about you finding fulfilling work. If this sounds interesting to you, go do it. If you had tons of fun creating chapstick in pharmacy school, hey, that could be a sign. This may be an interesting career path for you. And yeah, you won't be making chapstick at the end of the day. <laughs> You'll be doing much more complex things than what you did back in school. But compounding pharmacy can be great for the right person. Let me know if this video was helpful to you. Leave a comment or a question. What career path should we go over next? I'd love to know what you think. So thanks for watching this video and until I see you in the next one, take care.